This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? In this project, we're going to build a full screen responsive image slider using HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. So, no jQuery, no animation libraries, or anything like that. We'll just be using CSS transitions along with some JavaScript to dynamically change the classes and so on. All right, so right now I have it, so we have to click the arrows to, to make it slide. However, Uh, there's a value that we can change to make it go automatic as well. And we just have a, a, a large background image, our previous and, and next buttons, and we have this little content area. And if I slide, you'll see that the next image fades in and the content area slides in from the left. All right, so I have, I think, six different slides here. And as far as the images go, I have them local just so it's faster, but I will have a link in the description to a code pen that has all the code along with these, the, the remote links to these images if you want to use these exact images. And it is responsive, so if I make this 500 pixels or less, you'll see that now the, the content area slides in from the bottom and it goes all the way across. Okay, so that's what we'll be building. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Let's jump into VS Code. And what I have here is uh, three files so index.html, style.css, and main.js. And then I just have a folder called images with all the, the local images here. Uh, but again, I will have the code pen that will have all the, the remote links. So let's get started here with the HTML. This should be really quick. It's, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to map out a boilerplate here with Emmett. And by the way, I'm using the winter is coming dark theme for VS Code, if you're interested. I, I like it. I've been using this on my dev machine. Uh, so for the title, I'm just going to say full screen slider. And let's add our CSS. Okay, now we are going to use Font Awesome for these, these arrows. So I'm just going to quickly go over to fontawesome.com. Hit this button here and grab the link. Okay, I'll copy that. Paste that in there. And as far as the body goes, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to have a, a container div with a class of slider. It's just going to wrap around everything. Um, and then within that, we have all of our slides. Okay, we're going to have six of them. And of course, you can have less or more or whatever you want. So let's give this a uh, div a class of slide. Now, the way this works is whatever slide is showing or whatever image and content is showing is going to have the class of current. Okay, and obviously we want to show the first one first. So this is going to have a class of current. All right. And as far as what goes in here is just the uh, content. So we're going to have a div with the class of content and that's just going to have an H1. We'll say slide one and then a paragraph, which I'm just going to do lorem 15 which will put just 15 words of dummy text. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just copy this slide div right here. And we want one underneath, except we want to remove the class of current. We only want current should only be on one of these at a time. Okay, and we're going to use JavaScript to change it to the to the next one and the next one and so on. All right, so I'm going to grab this whole div right here and I'm just going to do shift option or shift alt on Windows and click the down arrow to copy it down. So that's three, four, five and six. All right. And then we're going to go up and just change the titles real quick. So slide two, slide three. I'm going to keep the same text. If you want to change it, you can uh, Let's see four, five and six. Okay, so that's our those are our slides. Now we just need our buttons. So under the last div here, I'm going to put a class of buttons and we're going to have a button with the ID of P P R E V. So previous and inside here we'll have our icon. So I with the class of F A S and the icon we're using has a class of F A dash arrow dash left and I'll copy this down and this one here will have a class of F A right or arrow right. And we're also going to change the ID to next. And that's it. That's our HTML. Okay. Uh, actually, one last thing. We need to make sure we include our script. 
So let's do script source main dot js. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open this with live server, which is a VS Code extension, and it's going to look like this. Okay, so we have our slides, we have our buttons down here with the icons. All right, and I'm just going to close this up now. So that's it for the HTML. Let's move on to the CSS. So first thing I'm going to do here is grab uh, the font I'm using, which is Roboto. So I'm going to go to fonts dot Google dot com. And right here we have the Roboto font. So I'm just going to click the plus sign and let's grab the CSS import right here. Okay, so we'll throw that in there and then we'll copy the, the property, the font family and close that up. So let's do body and paste that in. Okay, so that should change up the font for us. So let's see, in addition to the body, I'm going to add in a reset here. So I want to set box sizing to oops, box sizing to border box and just remove the margin padding from everything. Okay, and then as far as the other body styles, we're just going to set the background to uh, dark gray and we'll set the color to white. It really doesn't matter because the only text we have is going to be in the content area, which has a white background, but we'll just set it to white. Um, and then let's see, we want to set a line height of 1.6. Okay, so we'll save that. should look like that so far. Um, now we're going to grab the container, which we gave a class of slider. And this I'm going to set the position to relative because we're going to be positioning stuff absolute within the slider. Um, and then let's also set the overflow to hidden. And we want this to take up the entire viewport. So we're going to set the height to 100 VH, which is viewport heights. So no matter how big or small the browser is, it'll always be 100. It will always fill the whole thing. Same thing with the width. We'll do 100 viewport widths. Okay. So next thing we're going to style is the slide class itself. So this we basically want to overlay. We want the slide to overlay the whole thing here. So we're going to position it absolute within the slider and we'll say we'll start from the, the top corner. So top zero left zero and we want it to span 100% across and 100% high. Now the way that this works is the opacity by default is going to be zero, meaning it's completely translucent, translucent. It's completely invisible. And then whatever class gets current or what I'm sorry, whatever element has the current class will change that opacity to one, which will make it solid. So we initially want to set the opacity to zero. All right. Now, when we use JavaScript to change the class, or to add the class of current, remove it from one, add it to the next. We want it to fade. So we're going to add a transition here to give it that that effect. Okay, we want to transition the opacity property. Uh, as far as the length of time, I'll do 0.4 seconds. And let's say we want it to ease in and out as far as the, the animation type. All right. So if I go ahead and save that, we take a look and see that every, they're all they're all gone. Everything with the class of slide is gone. Now we want to make it so if it has the class of current, then it shows. So let's grab slide dot current. Okay, so if it has the class of slide and current, then we want the opacity to be one and we'll save that. Now you can see we only see slide one. All right. Now, as far as the images go, I'm going to just add, I'm going to have those at the bottom and I'm going to just paste those in real quick and I'll show you how I how I do that. Okay, so I'll paste these in. So I'm just taking the slide class. I'm using the pseudo selector first child, which just grabs the first slide class and adding the background image. Okay, I'm centering it, covering it. Um, then I'm grabbing the next one with nth child two, three, four, all the way to six. And I'm just adding the images. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that at the bottom. And if I save, you'll see now we get that first image. Now, if I were to go to the, the HTML here and manually take the current class off of this slide 
and put it onto this slide and save, you'll see that it's going to show that one. Okay, so whatever class or I'm sorry, whatever element that class is on is going to show over here. All right, so now what I want to style is the content this right here. We want this to be positioned down here and what's going to happen is initially it'll be set to be pushed off the screen somewhere over here, also invisible with opacity zero. And then it's only going to come in. It's only going to show if there is a class of current. Okay, so it would only show on this one. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go. Let's go right under here um, and we'll add in dot slide dot content. All right, so let's just style it initially. So we'll say position is going to be absolute. So it's positioned absolute within the slider and I want it, let's say from the bottom uh, 70 pixels. Okay. now, like I said, I'm, I'm going to have it off the screen to begin with. So we're going to actually set it to um, to be left negative 600 pixels. And the width of the entire thing is also going to be 600 pixels. So if I save that now, we can't see it anymore. It's it's over here. So for just for now, I'm going to set this to zero so we can see it. Okay. Uh, now we also want to add a background color and stuff like that. So let's do background color and we're going to use RGBA. So red, green, blue, alpha. And I want it to be white so 255 for red green and blue that'll make it white and then the alpha I'm going to do 0.8 which will make it slightly translucent all right we want to change the text color though so let's say color uh, let's do 333 so dark gray and we also want some padding I'm going to do 35 pixels padding and um, let's save that take a look Okay. I want the the heading to have a little margin on the bottom, so I'm just going to add right here. Let's say slide content h1. And I'm just going to set a margin bottom of 10 pixels. Okay, so I have the styling I want. Now, not only is this going to be off-screen to begin with unless it has the class of current which I'm going to add in a second it's also going to be invisible so I'm going to set the opacity to zero as well so let's let's go up here and change left the left property to back to negative 600 pixels Oops. and then I'm also going to set opacity to zero Okay, so right now it's completely gone. However, I want it to show if the class is current, if it has the current class, which this div, this slide right here does. So let's add that styling. So what we'll do is say slide dot current. And then we want to style the content. Okay, so basically we're just saying we want to style the content of the current slide. So we want to set opacity back to one so we can actually see it and then we want to move it over so right now it's off the screen it's to the left 600 pixels so I'm going to use transform and then translate so translate X which is the X axis so so horizontal and I want to bring it over 600 pixels from where it is which is right now negative 600 pixels now I want this to happen smoothly so I'm going to add a transition And I want the transition on all properties because I want the opacity and the, the transform property for the for the timing. I'll do 0.7 seconds ease in out. And I want a little delay because once the image fades to the next one, I want a tiny delay before the, the content comes in from the slide. So that's where we can what we can put here is the delay of 0.3 seconds. So now I'll save and now it's going to show. Okay. It's going to show because this slide has the class of current. Again, if I go back here and I change that, now you'll see slide two shows. Okay, the content shows. All right, so let's see. As far as the CSS goes, the last thing we have is the buttons. 
Okay, because right now we can see they're way down here. Um, so let's do that next. Okay, so first thing we'll do is let's position them. Now I want the next button over to the right in the middle and the previous to the left. So let's say uh, we'll just do button with the ID of next. I'm going to position. Absolute and we want it from the top. We want it 50%. So we want it halfway down the screen and then let's push it from the left. Uh, I'm sorry, from the right because it's going to be on the left, but we don't want it. We don't want it right on the edge here. So we'll say from the right 15 pixels. All right. And then the previous button is going to be similar. So let's do button with the ID of prev. And it's going to be 50% from the top. However, it's going to be 15 pixels from the left. Okay, so let's save that. And now you can see our buttons are in place. Now we want to style these. So let's say um, class of buttons and then button. Actually, we should probably put the class of buttons here as well. Just looks neater. Okay. So obviously this is going to this this is going to be the style for both buttons. So let's add a border of 2 pixels solid white. And let's do background color of transparent. And let's say color white. And when we hover over it, we want a, a mouse pointer. So let's make sure we put in cursor pointer. And we want to add some padding. So we'll do padding 13 pixels and 15 pixels. So if I save it, it's going to look like that. And if you like the square look, that's fine. But I'm going to make them circular. So I'm going to add a border dash radius of 50 Save. Uh, oops, semicolon. All right. Now you see when I click, it has that outline. I want to get rid of that. So let's make outline none. Okay, there we go. So that's the button. Now we also want a hover effect. I want it filled in white if we hover over it. So let's just add in down here buttons, button hover state and set the Uh, background color to white and the color to dark gray. All right. So now if I hover over it, we get the white background. All right. So we should be all set for the styling. Um, I, I do want to add a media query to make this responsive, but I'll do that after. So let's go to our JavaScript now because I mean, it has no functionality yet. We need to uh, we need to do that with JavaScript. So I'm going to start off by selecting some stuff from the DOM. So I want all the slides. So I'm going to use the document dot query selector all. And what this does is it just it allows us to get multiple elements and put them in something called a node list, which is like an array. So I want anything with the class of slide. All right. Next thing I want is the uh, next and previous buttons. So let's do const. Next equals and I'll just use query selector because we're just grabbing one item here and that's going to be the ID of next. Okay, I'm going to copy this down. We also want the previous button. We'll call this prev. Um, and then we're going to we're going to want an option to let it scroll automatically if we want. So I'm going to set a, a variable of auto. And I'm going to start off with just false, meaning I, I don't want it to, to slide automatically. Okay, and in order for it to go automatic, we need to have some kind of interval. So let's do const um, interval time and we'll set that to 5000 milliseconds. And we're also going to initialize a variable called slide interval to keep track of it. Okay, so those are our variables. Now we're going to have two methods. One is going to be next 
and one is going to be previous, okay? Our next slide, previous slide. So I'm going to use an arrow function. If you don't want to use arrow functions, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to say cons next slide. And first thing I want to do is grab the current element, okay? The, the, the div that has the class of current. So let's do const current. And I'm going to use document dot uh, query selector. And let's grab the class of current. All right. Now, immediately, right after I put that in the variable, I want to remove that current class. So I'm going to take that current variable and call class list dot remove. Oops. And I want to remove that current class. Okay, let me actually just put um, comments here. So this will remove current class. Okay, so now that we have that very that current variable, we need to see, let me just go to the HTML for a second. So we're, we're right here, right? We grab this div with the class of current. We need to see if there's another class of slide. or another element with the class of slide after it, okay, which which is a sibling. Okay, this div right here is a sibling to this div because they're on the same level. So the way that we can do that, let's say check for next slide. The way that we can do that is with an if statement. And we can take that current element and we can call next element sibling. Okay, so if next element sibling. Um, now, if that's true, then we want to add current to next next sibling. And we can easily do that by just saying current dot next element sibling dot class list dot add. And we'll go ahead and add the current class. All right. Now, if we're at the end, meaning You know, if we're on the last div here and there is no next um, element with the class of slide, then we want to go back to the beginning. We want to add current back on the first div here. So the way that we can do that is uh, let's just say, let's put a comment here and say uh, add current to start. And we can do that by taking these slides. Okay, remember we have this this node list, which is like an array and we, they have indexes. So zero would be the very first div with the class of slide. And that's where I want to add current. So I'm going to say class list. Dot uh, add. And I'm going to add the class of current. All right now. After all that happens, I want to quickly remove the current class again, um, but I'm going to just I'm going to do it in a, a little delay. Okay, so I'm going to add a set timeout here. So set timeout is just a, a JavaScript function. It actually takes in a function. I'm going to use a callback here and I'm going to take that current variable and just remove the current class. Just like that. Okay, and that's it. That's our next slide function. Now, previous slide is going to be very, very similar. So I'm going to just copy this. Okay, the difference here, let's just change the name first. So previous slide. Um, the difference is uh, we still want to get the current. We still want to remove it uh, quickly. And then here, instead of looking at the next element sibling, we want to look at the previous element sibling. Okay, and there's a method called previous element sibling. I'll just change this comment as well. Say so, so we're going to check to see if there's a previous element sibling. If there is, we're going to add the current class to that previous sibling. So right here we want to change that to previous element sibling as well. Now down here, this is going to change because what we're saying here is if we if we get to the very beginning and we click back, What do we want to do? We want the last one to come in, right? So instead of an index of zero, I'm going to take the the total length of the slides. So slides dot length and just minus one. That way we get the very last. Okay, we don't have to manually put a number in here. It doesn't matter how many slides we have. This will this will work. 
So we're going to say add current to last. Okay, and that's it. Now, if I save this, nothing happens, obviously, because we don't have any events that are firing these these functions off. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add our button events. So I'm going to take the next button, which we defined above, add an event listener to it. We want to listen for a click. And that's going to fire off a function. And then I'm going to call next slide. Okay. Now we want to I'll just copy this down and we're going to do pretty much the same thing with preview. Okay, so we have our previous button. When that's clicked, we want to call previous slide. So let's save that. Let's go back and click next and it works. So what's happening is it's just changing that. It's just moving the current class around. If I open up my dev tools here and I go to uh, elements and we look in here, you can see that this one right here is the class of current. If I click the arrow, the next one has it next. And then if we're at the very end and I click it, it goes back to the beginning. Okay, same thing if I go back from the first one and I hit back, it goes on to the end. Okay, so that's really all JavaScript is being used for is just moving this current class around. The actual animation, the sliding and fading is happening by with the transitions in the CSS. All right, now the next thing I want to do before we add the functionality to make it scroll automatic, I just want to make it responsive because right now if we make it small like this, uh, that doesn't really you know, the content is going off the screen and stuff like that. So this is pretty easy. We'll just go back to our style sheet and down at the bottom here. I'll go right above the where we did the images and let's do a media query. So we'll say uh, max width of 500 pixels. Okay, so if the screen is 500 pixels or less, we're going to take the content div and whoops, let's initially set it from the bottom negative 300 pixels and from the left zero and we'll make the width 100% so it goes all the way across and then we want to add say slide dot current so if it's the current content then we want to add a transform of translate why this time because we're coming in from the bottom we're, we're on the y axis which is you know vertical so we're going to say translate y and if we want to go up we need to do negative okay if we do just if we do 300 pixels it's going to move it down we want to come up from the bottom so let's save that and there we go so now it's 100% across and initially it's negative 300 pixels from the bottom so it's down here But then when we get the current class attached to it, it's going to slide up because we set translate Y to negative 300. All right, cool. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and just add in the auto scroll or auto slide. So I'm going to go back to our JavaScript and we already have this value here. We already have our interval time and we initialize this um, slide interval. So let's go down to the very bottom. And let's say auto slide. So we want to check that value of auto first. So if that's true, then let's say run next slide at interval time. Okay, so we're going to set um, slider interval or slide. What is it? Slide interval, which we we initialized above with let. And we're going to set it to set interval, which is a JavaScript function, and we want to run next slide. Uh, next slide, actually, we don't need parentheses. Um, and then we want to pass in our interval time, which we also described above. So if I go ahead and save that, that's not going to work because this is set to false. So however, if I set this to true and I save this, In five seconds, it should go ahead and switch. And there we go. Okay, so five more seconds. Now we still have an issue here because the interval, if I go ahead and I and I manually change it, 
the interval is not going to reset. So it changes. I hit next. Let me see if I can trigger this or time this right. So you see how it just switch really fast there. Basically what we need to ha happen See how fast that went. What we need to happen is once we click this or this, we need it to, to clear. We need to reset the interval. So down in the event um, and we only want to do this if auto is true. So again, I'm going to do if auto um, and we're going to want to do this just like we did down here. However, we want to clear the interval first, so we're going to run clear. interval which is just a, a javascript method and we just pass in our slide interval okay we want to do this for both next and previous so I'll put that there as well okay so we'll save that so now it doesn't matter when we hit this arrow button it's going to reset and it's going to wait five seconds or whatever we put for the interval Okay, so if I click, it's just going to wait five seconds. So we're not going to get that weird effect where it's, you know, it shows a picture for an one second and then four seconds. It's always going to be five no matter what. All right, but I'm going to set this back to false. Okay, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave it a like. And uh, I will put a, a, a code pen link in the description, which will have all the code. It'll also have the remote links to the images, which are just unsplash images, which is a great site for for free stock photos. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.